I'm going to play a game of solitaire for Hong Kong Mahjong. If you're new to this game, look for information in the video description below so that you can learn the fundamentals. You can also download this player reference so you can follow along. Playing solitaire is a great way to shorten your learning curve, so if you have tiles at home, give it a try. If you're new to Mahjong or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. All my tiles have been mixed and built into walls next to the risers. This way we can keep track of the progress of the game based on how many tiles are left for picking. I'm going to deal the tiles now. Player 1 will get 14 tiles. Players 2, 3, and 4 will get 13 each. Then we're going to look at each player's hand and see where the strengths lie. Hopefully we'll be able to find some scoring elements. We'll say that this is the East round and we have a three fawn minimum. If you don't know, a fawn is a scoring element. Don't forget to download that player reference so you can follow along. Everybody has their tiles. We are going to look at the dealer or east and see what we can do with their tiles. For this player, since we have a three fawn minimum, I think we could play a half flush. Cracks with honors. Honors are made up of winds and dragons. So I would start by discarding these. And you'd think, well, why discard a chow? There's a chow right there. If you mix chows with pungs, let's say, if we pung this, three of a kind, if you mix a chow in a different suit with pungs, none of the number tiles will have value. And we've got to get to three fawn. A half flush is three fawn. And we can chow and pung. So here, for example, we have a potential chow, potential chow, potential pung, and then we have single honors. So all we really need to do here is pair up. If we can get a pair of any one of these, we'll be set to chow and pung. So let's just see what happens. We're gonna gather cracks, winds and dragons, and discard these. Try for a half flesh. And now we're gonna see what we can do for player two. They have two flowers. Flowers are bonus tiles. You can't win with a flower in your hand, so we need to exchange these. For Hong Kong Mahjong, we just exchange right away. So this player doesn't have any, so then it's this player's turn and they will exchange their flowers first. This is player one, player two, three, and four. If you get your own flower, you get score for that. You get a fawn. But in this case, we have a three and a four which are these two players' flowers. So they won't get score here, but we can get a replacement for each of those. So for this player, I would think a half flush, but they have a pair. I would hold that because if we get more pair, we could play all pung, which is three of a kind. So you can mix suits with all pung. So I think I would hold that for as long as possible Discard these first, collect dots and honors. These are isolated. This we could maybe chow, pung. So we need more dots or pairs. So we'll just see what happens here. Let's look and see what we can do for player three, also known as West. So for this player, they have more dots than they do cracks and bams. So I think I would go for a half flush with honors. Here we have two pair. These could become pungs, three of a kind, hopefully. This is a south, which is this player's seat, east, south, west, north. If they get a pung of south, they won't get score for that. But any pung of dragons is worth a fawn. So that will be helpful if we can pung that. 
So let's discard these and collect dots. Here we can chow, chow. And you can chow in one suit with winds and dragons and have pungs in here because half flush, no matter what the other sets are, is a half flush. If you have all pung in one suit, that's different. You get more score for that. So chows are not as valuable as pungs. So we'll see what happens here. All we need to do is get three fawn minimum. Let's see what we can do for north now. Okay, they have five offsuit tiles. Their major suit is dots. And they do have child potential, single honors. So that's gonna be a challenge. I think I would go for dots and honors. This is gonna be interesting because this player is in cracks, dots, dots, dots. So these three are gonna be fighting for tiles. You've gotta play as if you don't know though. So make decisions one player at a time. We're ready to start. We're gonna discard here. So let's discard the dots first, five dot. One of the reasons I wanna discard dots first because I don't wanna give an impression of which suit I'm playing yet. If we discard dots, they won't know which suit we're in, bams or cracks. And we have three dots that we can get rid of. So that's one extra tile to discard before the bams. So that'll give us a little bit of time to solidify our major suit. So we threw a five dot here and nobody can take a five dot. You can only chow from the player on your left. So here there's a three, four. You think, well, why don't we chow? You cannot chow from the player on your right. You can only chow from the player on your left. So this player will be able to chow from this player, this player from this player, and then this player could chow from this player. So the player on your left discards a tile, you can chow. In this case, we're not ready for a five dot. So since nobody can take it, we're gonna draw. We got a dot. Now we could have taken that chow, maybe next time around. We know this player is not gonna hold dots unless they're playing pungs then you never know because you can mix suits with pungs. So we might be able to get dots out of this player and make this happen with chows. Let's discard this four crack. And we're gonna use this to mark whose turn it is. We'll draw here. This player cannot take a chow from the player on their right. So we can't do like a four, five, six because we can only chow from this player. So we're gonna draw. One crack, they got a pair. So we're gonna keep that. We could potentially play all pung. We have one, two, three pair. Any pair is a potential pung. So let's go ahead and keep the cracks because right now we have three cracks and four dots. If we start drawing cracks, maybe we could sacrifice the dots and play a half flush for more score. Anytime you mix suits with number tiles, you could drive your score down. So let's just leave our options open and discard a six BM. And nobody can take it, so we're gonna draw. Seven BAM, that's not helpful. We want dots. Let's discard the six BAM. We're looking for cracks. Nope, got a nine dot. So BAMs are going down. Let's get rid of these dots. Hoping that people aren't ready for them. And here we can actually chow. So we're gonna chow. And you turn the tile to indicate which player threw it. In this case, the player on the left. So we'll put that by their flowers. We're gonna hold the dots. Let's discard seven BAM. Now that we have chows out, we're gonna to have to discard these because you do not wanna mix chows with a pung in a different suit. That will negate the value of all your number tiles. So we need to sacrifice that three. 
But I think that's okay though, because here we can chow here or here, pung here. All we really need to do is get a few more dots and maybe pair those up. So we discarded a seven bam, so we can draw here. Eight crack, all right, there's that crack. That's what I was talking about. So let's get rid of the dots. We now have an equal number and pairs. One, two, three, four pair. We could pung all of those and then maybe pair with the east or draw in more cracks. Let's go ahead though and get rid of the eight bam. Eight bam. So we're just ready to pung here. Anytime any of these tiles go down, we could say pung. You can pung from any discard. Chow is only from the player on your left. A pung is from any player. So eight bam was discarded. Nobody can take it. And that means we will be able to draw. We need a dot or these tiles. We got a dot. We actually have a chow, three, four, five, or four, five, six. So that was a good pick. Let's discard one bam. Nobody wants the bams. So we're gonna draw. Eight bam. Let's continue discarding these dots, especially since we know the player on our right is in dots. We'll get rid of them as soon as we can. In this case, they're not ready for a seven dot, so that was a good discard. We're gonna draw. Flower, and it's a number two, so they're gonna get score for that. They got a dot. Now they could maybe pung, chow, pung, pung, potential. So let's go ahead and discard this three bam. And it looks like nobody wants BAMs, so we'll draw here. Three crack, we'll keep that. Let's put this in order. These are eights. Incidentally, there is a little cheat sheet at the bottom of this player reference that shows all the cracks with numbers on top. So you can learn the symbols of those tiles. So we have four, four, four. We need to discard. Let's discard this one dot. So we can get rid of all these dots. Up here, we're not ready. We have a single one. This is not a game where you can just pick up a discard and put it in your hand. When you claim a discard, you have to add two or three tiles to it to complete a block. So in this case, we're not ready for that one dot, so we need to draw. We got a nine dot. That's a good pick. They could maybe pung that. Let's get rid of the seven bam. And down here, we're gonna draw. Here you'd think, well, why not chow? That's an offsuit. We need cracks. Even though we're not committed yet, if we chow here, we'd have to throw all that away. And we only have three bams. So we're gonna stick with cracks. We got a west. That's what we needed. Some kind of a pair in here. So now we could maybe pung that. Let's discard the nine dot. And here, skip these players, cause we're gonna pung. And this will be for the player on my right. So we're gonna turn the tile on the right to indicate this player discarded. So these two players got skipped. And incidentally, if this player wanted to chow and this player wanted to pung, the pung takes precedence. If let's say this player wanted to pung and this player wanted to mahjong or win, this player gets precedence. So the priority is chow, pung, mahjong. All right, so we did a pung. We're gonna discard these now. Let's discard the six crack. The tiles on the inside are most efficient. So if you're not gonna use a particular suit, discard from the inside out. So for example, four th or really three through seven are more efficient than one, two, and eight, nine, because they're, they can be used for chows like down in here.
So we threw a six. Here we have three, four, five, or we could do maybe four, five, six. We could potentially take that, but that would leave two isolated tiles. I say we stay concealed and draw. We already have a child right here, four, five, six. Some say don't break a child and make a child, especially if it leaves isolated tiles, which is what would happen if we took that six. So just because a tile goes down that could fit your plan, it may or may not be a good choice for an exposure. So we're gonna draw six bam, that's been thrown. And clearly nobody wants bams. We're gonna draw three dot, that is a keeper. We could potentially pung all these pairs here. That was a good draw. Let's discard the three bam. And we're gonna draw up here. Seven bam. Drawing for north. Six bam. We got a crack. That's a pung now. If you draw into a pung or a chow, you just stay concealed. So we just stay concealed and we'll discard the five bam. Five crack. This player can't take it. You can't chow from the player on your, on your, let's see. Yeah, on your right. This is the player on the right. Here, we're not ready, so we're gonna draw. Two bam. Green dragon. That's a single, but it could help us get to a half flush. Let's discard seven crack. Here, let's chow, because this particular chow will leave another potential chow. So in this case, taking that seven is a good thing. So this is from the player on our left, chow, and we'll discard eight bam. We just got through the second wall. We're now going into the middle game. So this player is playing a half flush, half flush, half flush, half flush. Everyone's playing a half flush and that's to get to three fawn. Or more. Three, two, one. That's to get to a half flush or more. Or no, three, two, one. The reason we went with half flush is because it's three fawn and that's the minimum. Eight bam was discarded, let's throw that. Two dot. We could maybe play all pung. One, two, three, four, five pair. Or we could play seven pair. That's one of the exemptions for the four sets in a pair. You can do seven unique pair. Let's discard the five dot. Up here, we have a five, six, three, four. Let's chow. So now we have a pung and a chow out. Let's discard this eight crack. Down here, they're not ready for an eight crack, so we're gonna draw two dot. Up here, we could chow, one, two, three, or we could hold off and pung. Up here, we could pung. Pung, 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 pung. Let's go ahead and pung. So this is the player across from us. So we're gonna mix suits and it's okay to mix suits with pungs. 
we're going to throw a six dot up here we're going to draw one bam drawing down here north we got a pair again okay so all we need to do here is pung pung or chow pung and be ready to win we'll discard the nine bam green dragon that could potentially bring some score we'll throw the four bam so let's discard now or draw three two one six dot two dot there's already a two dot out we have a potential chow potential chow these are all singles none are out so let's see let's discard the south because that won't give them any score down here oh no here it is pung and this is from the player on my right so we have two pungs now for west we can discard maybe the east now that single tile is not going to help them so there's an east nobody can take it so we'll go ahead and draw here seven crack seven crack let's throw the seven crack four bam two bam two crack all right now we have a pung of two dots out here we have a one two three and two pair if we discard this one crack they'll be ready to win but because they have a pung of two dots out none of these number tiles are of value and they would have no score we have a three fawn minimum so we have to stick with this and discard the chow we need to do pungs because we have a pung of two dots out that make us committed to that convention so two crack nobody can take it we're gonna draw five bam drawing for east oh they got a flower three bam east that's already been thrown east this will be a good discard now because there's only four of every tile let's draw red dragon none are out let's discard the three crack not ready we're gonna draw up here four dot okay there's a chow four five six let's get rid of that east drawing down here nine dot one bam eight crack oh they got a punk let's discard the red dragon now they're ready to win on either a white dragon or a one crack for all pung this would be better because that we can get score for this we won't any pair of dragons has no value so let's hope for the white dragon red dragon was discarded so these are singles can't do anything there we'll draw two bam white dragon east was thrown let's discard that two bam seven dot up here we could potentially chow and then we still need to get a pair in here and we do have chow potential so let's go ahead and chow the seven dot chow nine 
Now we can get rid of these scary tiles because they're valuable honors. And here we can still chow. We need a pair in here still. So red dragon was thrown. This will be a good discard. Let's draw one crack. Okay, that might be helpful. Although we need a two, three, four, or three, four, five. We could do a one, two, three. We still need, we really don't need any of that because we have a pung and two pair. We already have a chow out. That chow plus these make up four. All we really need is a pair. Let's discard the white dragon. And that would be Mahjong for this player. White dragon. There's their pair. Oh, here's a Pung. There is a Pung. And here's a Pung. They have all Pung and a dragon Pung. So that's three fawn plus a fawn for the dragon, that's four. But they also have no flowers, and that's another fawn. So they have four fawn. Four fawn, this player would owe this player thirty two points. These two players would pay this player. 16 points and that's all on the player reference right here that's how you play mahjong this player was really they just needed to pung pung and get a pair this player needed to pung all these and then they needed a pair this player needed to chow and get a pair so all Pung took the game. They had all the pairs they needed. When you have a three fun minimum at your table, a quick go-to is all Pung. Mix suit all pung. If you can do it in a half flush, you get even more score. Half flush is another good go to. That's three fawn. And then those valued honors, dragons, your seat wind, or the wind of the round, all those can add value to your hand. But keep your eyes open for that initial three fawn. Everything else will be icing on the cake. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next solitaire for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.